Number one um, has us saying that Lynn is playing handball and wants the ball to bounce off um, CB, which is here, and land at point D. And where should she aim on the wall if she's standing at point A? So we have these two similar triangles here. And we're trying to figure out, so actually I'm going to change this. So we're trying to figure out um, how far she is really from point B because that's the way the answers are written. So how far from this point B should she be standing? So we're actually trying to figure out the lengths of this orange triangle. And so we can take a look here and we see that to point A, it's 16. So we know this part is 16. And then to this first hash is nine. So this whole green segment over here is 25 units long. And then we also know that the entire length of CB is 20 because it's the same as down here. So we're gonna have to split this side up proportionally with the two similar triangles. And so when we look at that, so if we kind of set up these proportions, um, we've got a 16 compares to the 25, and then we need to split this 20 proportionally to that. Now, when we look at this, okay, this is the total, so not just these pieces. So if we take this total amount, okay, that's 41 parts. Because this fraction doesn't simplify any further. If it did, we could simplify it, um, but it doesn't. So we're going to split this 20 into 41 equal parts. So we're going to take the 20 total units, we're going to divide it into 41 equal parts. And that will tell us how big each part is. And now that's going to be a nasty decimal, so I'm just going to leave it. Um, but then we're going to want 16 of those parts because we want the orange portion. So we're going to want 16 of those parts. We're going to do 20 divided by 41 and then take 16 of the parts is what we want. And then that's going to give us the actual distance that we need to stand which in this case is 7.81. And then these are being measured in feet, so feet. So we took um, and proportioned it out by dividing out the corresponding sides that we have. So that gave us a fraction of 16 over 25. If you add these together, you get 41 proportional parts. So then we took the 20 total, okay, because C to B is 20 total, divided it into 41 equal parts, and then we needed 16 of those parts since we were in the orange triangle. And that gave us that 7.8. All right, number two, you want to make a bank shot. So sketch a path that the cue ball, this white one, um, will go so that it bounces off the bottom wall. So it needs to bounce off this wall and then it needs to hit the, the yellow stripe nine ball. So we can't really see that that's yellow, but this one with a stripe, um, and we want it to hit into this pocket. So what I would do is line up, we want it to go in this pocket. So I would do a straight line from that pocket through that ball, and that's where it'll connect down there. And then you can take the cue ball to that same point, and this is the path that I would hypothesize would work. Um, and so the similar triangle created would only go to the cue ball. So that's how you could check if this bank shot will work. You could measure the angles here. So you could measure this angle and see if it's the same as this angle. If it is, then these will create similar triangles since this would be a perpendicular distance straight down. And so with this, they would share that 90. So if those two angles are the same, so we could check um, the angles or measure the angles, um, or we could check that the sides are proportional. If we wanted to go ahead and measure kind of these sides created. Number three, Maya's playing a game with a class of second graders. Maya knows that she is exactly 120 inches away from a mirror. So right here, she's 120 inches away from the mirror. 
Um, she has students stand so that she can see just the top of their heads when they guess. Um, and then she guesses their heights and the students are amazed when she is really accurate. Um, and so why is she so accurate? So let's figure out the height of this um, person on the diagram. So my also knows that her height is 65. And when these kids stand back, um, and if she like had a measure, if she had like uh, some measurements here, so she could see that they're standing 72 inches back, she could just quick calculate um, this height and be really accurate on it because the triangles are similar. So the proportion that she could set up here is going to be a few different things, um, but she could be figuring out this H compared to 65, since those are the corresponding parts, um, would equal 120, or sorry, 72 over 120. So H compared to 65 should equal 72 compared to 120. And then she would just need to cross multiply here. So multiply 65 times 72 and then divide by 120 to get that H equals 39 inches. Number four, in the right triangles shown, the measure of ABC is the same as the measure of EBD. So you can see this marked on the picture. We also see the right angles marked, so we know the two triangles are similar. This question wants to know the length of BD, which is this triangle, or this side. And so we can see in um, triangle ABC, we actually don't have the corresponding measure here. So we're going to need to find that. And we can because this is a right triangle and we know two of the sides. So we're going to be able to first do the Pythagorean theorem. So 5 squared equals 3 squared plus that side length of BC squared. So this is 25 equals 9 plus BC squared. Subtract 9. And we would get 16 equals BC squared. So then we'll square root both sides and we come up with BC equaling four. So now we know this um, height here is four. So now we're gonna be able to use um, scale factor or proportions to figure out BD. And so we have the blue length. So let's look at the scale factor from blue to orange. So the scale factor is going to be 2 divided by 3. Remember the image length divided by the original. So now in order to figure out um, BD, BD is going to be the corresponding side times the scale factor. So um, that 4 times the scale factor of 2 thirds. And then we will get... Um, oh. BD, I guess. Um, BD is equal to 8 over 3. And then you could simplify that. Um, so you could say 8 thirds. You could say um, 2 and 2 thirds. Or you could do a decimal of 6.6 .6 repeating. So any of those are fine. Number 5 in right triangle ABC. C is the right angle. So let's draw a picture of this. So C is the right angle, and then you can name A and B, whichever other ones you want. It tells us that AB is 17, BC is 15, find the length of AC. And we know it's a right triangle, so we know we can do Pythagorean theorem. So 17 squared equals 15 squared plus AC squared. 17 is 289, 25 squared is 225 and then plus AC squared, subtract 225 from both sides, and we get um, 64 is equal to AC squared, and then we'll square root both sides and get that AC equals 8. Number 6 just wants us to fill in the blanks from the Pythagorean theorem proof that we did a few lessons ago. So this one tells us that we have A over X equals X over C. What else can that be written as? 
So if we were to cross multiply here, we get a squared equals, and then x times c or c times x. Then it says, and we know that b divided by y equals c divided by y from similar triangles. And that can be rewritten as what? So if we cross multiply again, that can be rewritten as b squared equals c times y. So then we know that if we did a squared, okay, which is this, plus b squared, so a squared is c times x plus b squared is c times y. That's what we could fill in there. So we know a squared plus b squared is the same as cx plus cy. Then it says we want to factor. And if we factor, so if we look at this purple equation, what do they have in common? And so both of these two terms have a c in common, so we could factor the c out. If we factor it out of the first part, we're left with x. If we factor the c out of this part, we're left with plus y. Then we can see um, that we know that x plus y. So what is x plus y equal to? Well, it's equal to c, so we can see that in the diagram. So x plus y is actually the same as c. So if we just replaced this in here as c, that would be c times c. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's our Pythagorean theorem. So then we finished the proof. Number seven, in right triangle ABC, the altitude CD has a length of H. We know that AD is four and BD is 16. We wanna come up with the length of AC. So we're gonna have to come up with the length of this altitude first so that we can then do Pythagorean theorem in this triangle over here. So we can figure out um, the length of the altitude by doing 16 over h equals h over 4. We can cross multiply this. So 4 times 16 is 64. h times h is h squared. Square root both sides, and that gives us that h equals 8. Then we have two legs in this right triangle over here. So now we'll be able to figure out um, ac. So c squared, which is ac, so ac squared equals the two legs, 8 and 4, squared, and then added together. So 8 squared is 64, 4 squared is 16, 64 plus 16 is 80. Then we can square root both sides. So you can leave it as square root 80. If you're supposed to simplify radicals, I'm just going to move up here for a second. Um, 80 is the same as 16 times 5. And we know that 16 is a perfect square. So the square root of 16 is 4. And then we leave the square root 5 under the radical. So eight, square root of 80 is the same as 4 square root 5. Or if you, can do, if you want to do decimals, you could just type in square root 80. And that gives you a decimal of 8.94. Number eight, match the vocab term with its definition. Um, so we've got the vocab terms here. So let's look at the definitions. There's a sequence of rigid motions and dilations that takes the first figure onto the second. So that is going to be the definition of similar figures. Remember, congruent figures is just rigid motions. When we add in the dilation, that means similar figures. Number two says when two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of a second triangle, we know the triangles are similar. And that's the angle-angle similarity theorem when we've got those two angles. Number three, a transformation using center C and a skill factor K takes and so we've got a center and a skill factor takes any point a to another point along that ray whose distance is a scale factor times further that is the definition of a dilation so we've got a center of dilation we've got a scale factor 
Number four, a drawing in which all lengths in the drawing correspond to um, lengths in an object by the same scale. So we've got drawing lengths that correspond to real life objects. That's a scale drawing. And then number five says a constant multiple by which the lengths of an original are multiplied. So if we take an original figure and multiply it by a number, that number that we're multiplying by is the scale factor. Then finally, number nine, Claire and Diego are discussing the quadrilaterals. Claire thinks the quadrilaterals are similar because the side lengths are proportional. Diego thinks they need more information to know for sure if they're similar. Do you agree with either of them? So yes, the sides are in proportion, okay? So they're in a two-thirds um, scale factor. So if we go from this one to this one, they're, they're in a two-thirds ratio. So if we did two divided by three, that's the same as six divided by nine if we were to simplify it. However, we don't know anything about the angles. So we're not sure if these angles are equal to each other. And in order for figures to be similar, not only do their sides need to be proportional, but their angles must also be proportional. So I agree with Diego. Um, because we don't know anything about, we don't know if corresponding angles are congruent.